I'm coming back. Here we go. Good. <laughs> I'm about getting it ready. So now it's perfectly clean. <laughs> so literally, Sparking clean. I just ran through the pre-clean program while um, while Lola was doing her recipe, and it was so quick. And so now I'm gonna start. So now what we're gonna do is the apple and sage stuffing. And here we go. And this is my little roof. Oh. <laughs> So we're gonna go back to let's get it cooked, and then we're gonna go with the stuffing. So I think a lot of people when they wait, when they think about Christmas, they always think, oh, I cannot have, I cannot not have meat. So they always think, oh, you have to have turkey, you have to have some sort of sort of main dish. But if you can't, then why don't you just make all of the sides to be vegetarian or vegan? Then it's perfectly balanced because then you can also give the chance of the meat eaters to have a little take on the vegetarian side of it. And to be fair, they won't tell the difference at all. So what we're gonna do is just start cooking. And the very first thing is two garlic cloves, but because again, I'm gonna do half the portion. So I'm just gonna use one and I've got all of my ingredients here. And the very first thing is the garlic. And here we go. So next, and it's asking for one brown onion and cut into halves. And then because I used half yesterday, so now I have the leftover. I'm just gonna chop, chop it in. And I think this is the best part of the thermal mix as well, because I hate chopping onions. It always makes me cry and cry and cry. But thermal mix just does a job in seconds and then without all the fuss and tear. And next one, you'll be butter. So usually I wouldn't really use butter myself, but I'm using it because uh, I've only got this machine for two weeks, so I don't really know its temper yet. I want to get to know it a little bit better before I can experience my own recipes. But um, I've used a vegan alternative to butter, and it's asking for 40 grams, so I'm using 20 grams. And alternatively, you can also use oil, um, any sort of vegetable oil. But the best way is probably macadamia um, or any of the nut-based oil, sesame. Um, but sesame will give it a strong flavor as well. So 20 grams. Next. And come, I think a lot of people don't know. So everybody, when they first experience a vegan, vegetarian, the first thing they go is coconut oil. They think coconut oil is the best option. But um, in fact, coconut oil is not so good for you. It's one of the very few vegetable oil that has saturated fat. So that would actually make you raise your cholesterol, which results in vascular disease as well. So um, stay away from coconut oil if you can. Uh, next one, so we're gonna have the lid on, which is here. Um, I've learned my trick. So always flip the liquid inside the bowl, not outside. And next. And um, this way would be three. Uh, so we're gonna speed to seven. That's just gonna chop up the onion and chop up the garlic nicely. This is only three seconds. So I'm just gonna stay on mute. Oh, it should be fine. Next. Uh, next. So it's asking us to scrape them. Uh, here we go. That's the chopped up the butter and onion. Uh, Let me just rinse it quickly. That will be ready. So, to be honest, I think thermal mix is um, the the procedure is exactly like me cooking. So you always have to chop up, and then it's always next step is the saute. So we are gonna saute the, the onion. Uh, we're gonna insert this as well. Um, don't forget to scrape down the lid as well, because we're just gonna have all this bits of butter and bits of um, the onions left on it as well. And make sure you do not tap on your thermal mix because you may damage your little precious scale. Here we go. Next. So now we're gonna go to speed one for two minutes and that's just gonna saute the onion nicely. So this, um, I think the next one is gonna ask for the bread. And I'll talk about the bread in a little bit. Can you hear me over the noise? Yes, yes, we can hear you. 
So the recipe actually asks for stale bread. And usually if you, what I did is I got just a loaf of a normal bread, which is a whole meal. Uh, but because the conditioner they use in baking now, it's actually quite difficult to bread to go stale. So if you want to do, you have to, it's asking for one day old, but one day old is still going to be quite soft. So the best way, and it's a little trick, what you can do is just pop in the toaster for like a couple, couple minutes and you just go stale straight away. But if you do have the time, you can actually pop them in the oven as well and then just bake them for about 10 minutes and they will also go stale quite quickly. Yeah. And then I've also got my sage here and my little apple. So with regarding the apple or any fruits or veg, um, usually the nutrients is always inside the skin. So do not throw away the skin for sure. The skin is where all of the antioxidant is. Um, but what you worry about is normally the, it's always pesticides residue and then that's what you worry about. So um, the, the little trick, what you do to clean it is to use baking soda. So what I do every single time when I go grocery shopping, when I come back, I'll dump all of my grocery in the sink and then I'll just use one tablespoon of baking soda uh, to one liter of water. And then I'll just let it soak for at least 15 minutes. And then you'll get rid of about 99% of the pesticide. So that way, even if you're not buying organic, you, you, you will be sure that you're not really eating any of the residues. And always leave the skin on because that's where the delicious part is. And the rest of it, oh, and I also I just found out for the cocktail, because usually we're using the stick, but when you see the stick, um, also sometimes it tips. When it tips, it's not that stable. So there's another trick is you can cut a little thing, but it looks a little sad. However, but if you do cut at the bottom of the, the marshmallow with a little little um, gap, and then you can just pop in the, the Rudolph on top of the edge of the glass, this way you wouldn't fall over, and then you wouldn't have a soaky, like a soap. So this one actually fell over the drink, and then it's quite soapy on the side. But our number mix is done, and the next one is the apple. So when you flip, as I said, always remember to flip vertical on top, then it's going to catch the liquid first and then you can get the liquid down, the lid down. And then it's asking for the apple. So we're going to have one apple instead of two and just cut into quarters. Okay, here we go. Um, the entire kitchen smells of onion now. <laughs> Next, so the sage leaves. Uh, leaves. It's asking for eight, so I'm just, just going to put four instead. And next is one table tablespoon of verge juice, which is just the equivalent of the white wine vinegar. Um, I did buy one for the recipe, but I think a better alternative would be the apple cider vinegar, which is kind of like the king. <laughs> so we're going to use this one instead. And here we go. And that will just be one tablespoon. And next. Um, so insert the mushroom cup again. Next. So we'll turn to speed five um, for three seconds. And so that means it's chopping again. So speed five is kind of just chopping. It's asking us to scrape down. Let me show you. So it's just chopped up all of the sage and then all of the apple as well. I just need to scrape down the side. And we're almost there. And um, remember to script down your lead as well. So inserting the lead. And then now we'll be script one for two minutes. So that's kind of cooking the apple through and cooking the stage flavor as well. Uh, 
why do you need stale bread? It's because the drier it is, um, the more absorbent it is to, to all of the juices coming in front of the, the apple, coming in front of the onion. So it tastes a lot better with the stale bread rather than the soft texture. But also you get that chewy bit as well. Um, and all you have to do is just tear it apart. Um, you can cut it yourself too. And then if you do want to style it um, beforehand, you can actually cut into little squares. Just lay it on a baking tray, like, and then you will style it too. It's, I always find it strange when people say stuffing or dressing, because they think stuffing needs to be cooked inside something. So they always think stuffing needs to be cooked inside the bird. But for this case, we're actually using the stuffing, um, just cooking it individually. If you do go on uh, YouTube, there's quite a lot of videos on the, the American guidelines. So they actually don't, do not recommend you to cook the stuffing inside the bird, just because you may not reach the safe temperature of the cooking. So it is a lot better just to cook it separately. So we're going to prepare this in board. We would have hot pot or we will have a large gathering meal for Christmas or any important holiday. So we don't really have a typical Christmas menu. And this is kind of like my first time to do the Christmas menu. Oh, a side tip, by the way, I always keep a Tupperware on hand and it can be a worn out one to, to just collect all of the scraps, to collect everything. So you don't have to always go back and forth with the, the trash can. I don't really make a mess either. And so this is done. And we're gonna go to the next step, which is asking us to, to add in the bread, which is here. So it's asking for 160 gram, I'm just gonna do 80 gram. So just remember this is lightly toasted before you do. So it, it needs to be dry to, to come up great. And that will be 15. It says it's for two slices, so I just added two slices. Next. We're gonna have two pinches of sea salt to taste, which will be one pinch for me, and pepper. And usually, when I cook myself, I don't really use salt. Um, we use miso as an alternative. But for miso, you shouldn't really cook it in high temperature, so it's always the last step to add into the recipe. But for this recipe, I'll add in the salt instead. So I'll just add a quarter or an eighth, a quarter, a quarter of a teaspoon. That would be kind of like a pinch. And we'll also add the pepper inside. The next one, black pepper. This one. And then I'm gonna insert the, the cup again. So we'll go to speed seven for 10 seconds. It's just gonna mix all of the, the flavoring inside. serve but before you serve this is popping hot so you have to wait until it cools down uh, if you see this is how it looks like now we're gonna scrape it down and then we're gonna get it in a bowl and let it cool for a few minutes um i did make a batch yesterday so i'll show you how you can serve it and then you can shape it as well and uh, just let it down take this down um, turkey is more of an American culture. So I went to American high school and every single Thanksgiving or, or uh, Christmas, we would always have turkey as a, a celebrate, celebration meal. And then for UK, I'm not necessarily sure what they eat for Christmas. I guess this could be um, a typical meal as well. That's all done. So now I'm gonna show you. I'm putting it out. So usually I won't put it on top of the, the cooking stove. But since I've got the thermal mix, I actually turned off the, I actually turned off the stove completely. <laughs> so it's not, it's no use for me anymore. So I'm using it more like a free space to prep stuff instead. <laughs> and this is how the stuffing is going to come out. And um, because it's still quite hot, so it's going to be um, be careful with the temperature. Usually, um, 
what I read online is the best way is to let it sit in the fridge overnight so you can soak up all of the flavor and then you can shave it second day instead. Um, so what I did yesterday is because I made a different batch and this is a pre-made. So instead we just make little balls. <laughs> so <Look> at that. Because <laughs> uh, this one, you can serve it perfectly as a side dish to any of the mains. Um, um, or if you want, um, I think the texture could be a little bit salty for some people. So if you do like it, you can find a little um, uh, ramping and then you can put inside the ramping and just let it bake before you serve. Because if you let it sit in the fridge overnight, but then you need, to re uh, you need to make it hot again. You can just bake for about 10 minutes at about 180 degrees. And then you have that crusty top and then you taste delicious as well. So you can serve it as a little side dish with a little rampings to the individual guest. But um, if you like stuffing yourself, you can, you can just serve it as it is and all beside a whole a tray of baked vegetables, roasted vegetables, that would taste great, I think. Here we go. And oh, I... <laughs> Sorry, uh, before we finish, to shape it, just a little tiny tip, um, because normally we'll just kind of grab the, any amount we have, so you don't necessarily make the balls to be uniform. But if you do want it to be uniform size, you can just get a teaspoon or a tablespoon and make sure every single scoop is actually within measure. So you can always just have a one teaspoon um, beveled. So we can shake that amount every single time. So the balls would always come out the same size and then you can stack them into any different, um, any shape you like. But that's kind of all for my recipe. And this is my little Rudolph. It's still on the side. <laughs> but um, how much 